Breeze. What's up, Bubba? It's Breeze from the MMA Breeze. How are you, man? What's up, man? Just getting into Florida a little bit tired, but it's go time. A couple yeah. days left. It's good to hear, man. It's good to hear. Look, something you said to me before the season really got going was, you know, we were talking about your history and, and your fight career, and you said, you know, things may have not gone your way every time because you weren't in your season, but then you elaborated. Now you're in your season. And so far, things have been looking pretty good. You took out the former champ, Lance Palmer, and you're you're just doing <clears> – <throat> fantastic under the, the bright lights uh if you could just elaborate on what's contributed to the success this season and what's keeping you so driven going into the the semifinals yeah man um, i think a lot of people caught me and um me dewey cooper and ray lewis's conversation after the last fight um we were talking about mentality and you know dewey cooper had heard a, a, a great story from ray lewis earlier about the mentality um, of the lion. Why is the lion um, the king of the jungle when the rhino or the elephant is a bigger or, or more formidable opponent or, you know, all these other animals are in the jungle? And the answer was the mentality. Um, you know, sometimes you, you just don't have the right mindset. You don't have the right camp. You don't have the right visuals. You don't have the right inspiration or right motivation. And when you finally get into your zone or you finally get into a place where you feel all these things are hitting on all the cylinders, it changes your mentality. And I would say that, you know, simply giving more understanding to my calling uh, on my life and giving more understanding of why my mentality makes me a lion and not a rhino. So the, I would say my focus on why I'm called to be here and what I'm doing is, is, is what, what was the main adjustment. Right on. Best of luck to you. All right, buddy. Thanks. Um... Jay Anderson, please. Thanks very much. And uh, Bubba, you know, you defeated the champ and the former UFC fighter during the regular season. So I'm just wondering if, in your mind, that's the best path you could have taken in terms of preparing yourself to go all the way this year. Your uh, question went out in the beginning. What'd you say? I didn't hear it. Several them. Um, you defeated the champ, the defending champ, the uh, and a former UFC fighter during this regular season. So I'm just wondering if that's the, the best road you could have taken to get to uh, the final this year. Um, I think I have one of the toughest roads, one of the harder roads. You know, if you look at all the opponents with Bobby Muffett being last minute change and him being, you know, such a formal opponent, such a good, tough fighter. Um, yeah, man, I think I've taken one of the tougher routes. Um, you know, I'm excited for the semifinals for, for both 45 brackets for both sides of the bracket. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm in my own zone in my own place. And none of that's none of that has, you know, even Chris Wade being ex UFC and, you know, all these guys being ex UFC, I, I care less where they're from. I know where they at and they're in front of me. <laughs> And we spoke to uh, Chris Wade just a few moments ago. He questioned you being the favorite. He said people are buying into your persona outside the cage. And I'm just wondering if you have any response to that. Yeah, he need to keep my name out of his mouth before I come snatch it out. Because he got a lot to say about who I am and who, who the world think I am. I think when I touch him, he'll realize why everybody think I'm going to beat him and why I know I'll beat him. Fair enough. And last one for me. When you look at the opposite side of the bracket... Uh, Brendan and Mavlid, is there any preference on your side as to who you might face down the road? I'll out punch the Russian. I'll out wrestle the British. It don't really matter. If the British one comes square, get smoked, he'll get ran over in the wrestling field. If the Russian boy beats the striker, he'll get ran over in another field. Uh, you know, I'm I'm different. The wrestler is not as good as the wrestler as me, and the striker doesn't hit as hard as I do. So either one of those guys is still going to be at the bottom of my fist. That's just how I feel about it. All right, man. Best of luck this Friday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mason. Hey, Bubba. This is Mason from Overtime Heroics. How are you, man? Doing well. Doing well. It's great to hear. I, I, I wanted to ask, how, how is your fight going to end on Friday night with Chris Wade? Uh, I'm going to... Uh, it's going to end with me being one step closer to being a world champion, million dollar man, uh, one step closer to the belt, one step closer to the check, one step closer to being on top of my game um, and in front of most people's eyes. Um, 
you know, I'm already on the scene as far as one of the top 145 pounders in the world. Um, and I don't know if my ranking sh- is what it should be. I don't know what my ranking is, to be honest with you. I don't think they have me in a top five. And I don't believe that there are top, I don't believe that there are three people at 145 pounds that can beat me in the world, regardless of organization. That's just how I'm feeling. That's how I'm coming. And, you know, the way I've been training, the way I've been seeing, I don't see it any other way. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. I actually forgot your question. And as somebody said earlier about Brendan Lockney, obviously a lot of people are excited at a potential matchup between you and the Englishman. How how, how would that fight go down? I know you mentioned. I'll beat the hell out of the Englishman. Y'all, y'all got love for him. I hear it in your voice. Y'all got a love for Brendan. And I ain't gonna lie, he he's done a good job of being a tough opponent. But, you know, Diamond almost took his ass down and drowned him. You know, I saw him literally gasp for water while swimming. And and, and I'm one of the best sharks in the water. That shit's going to be ugly. He got nothing in his camp. He's got no one in his camp like me. He got nobody in his camp that can do what I do, does what I've done. Um, you know, he's from a country that doesn't even appreciate wrestling like we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys grapple. Y'all don't wrestle. Y'all know moves. Y'all ain't wrestlers. Well, best of luck Friday night, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Fago Franklin. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, what's going on? No, I'm not. Um, what does it mean to you that more athletes are talking about mental health and how um, and how do you deal with it? Yeah, I think it's awesome. You know, it takes a couple of brave, strong, more times than not, minority athletes to say, "Hey, guys, there's a situation here. There's an issue here." And then everyone, you know, kind of runs it over until, you know, it hits their front doorstep or their backyard, you know, and I, and I believe that, you know, mental health and mental awareness is, is major. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to put myself on any kind of um, couch, um, you know, and, and just give the world everything that's going on with my mental um, stability or anything like that. But I will say that it is, is paramount, is key. The mentality is key. The, the mindset is key. Having, having things, you know, be uh, figured out why you're in an anxious mindset, all that type of stuff with, with the field that we do. You know, it's the, I was talking to a friend the other day. She's like, man, it's really wild that you like do this for a living. Like the way that you like you live, you fight, you train. Like this is a, you know, not, not many people have an everyday lifestyle that you have. And, you know, just to, just to hear and understand that, you know, we, we are different. I'm, I'm a different person. I'm a different breed. I'm a different mindset. And I try to root. I try to run with that. All right. Thank you, Bubba. Yes, sir. Uh, Zach Grady. How you doing, Bubba? Thank you very much for joining us. Just wanted to uh, get your response to uh, some comments made about 20 minutes ago uh, from your opponent. He said that he is highly motivated that he is the underdog coming into this fight and anyone who knows fighting, it's ludicrous that you are the favorite and you are getting nothing but hype here. Your thoughts on Chris Wade? I'm going to punch Chris Wade in his face. Um, what about The thing about Chris Wade is like, like if you look at the poster, of the four four featherweights, or if you look at the picture of the first or the first four featherweights uh, that are in the final four, the Russian has a broken nose, the British has a broken nose, I have a broken nose, but Chris Wade has n- no broken nose. Is that not because he doesn't get hit in the face? No, Chris Wade, to to be real with you, he he he, he not the 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 toughest as far as like mentality goes. He's got a scary ass mentality. Like he's real twitchy. He's real, you know. He yeah, he fights. He competes. He's a good athlete. But like, I I I've looked into the way Chris Wade interviews. I looked into the way he speaks. I look into you know the way he talks. His interviews. One, he thou protest too much. One, thou protest too much. Shut the fuck up about not only me, but about everything you feel about me being over uh, uh being better than you you know he he claims that i'm this conor mcgregor outside of the 
the the cage and I'm only a Damian Maya inside the cage. Like I, I just kind of like hold and drag and hold. He doesn't understand that a lot of these people are my friends that I fought and I was looking to knock these people out. But once that I saw that, you know, I'm bullying people and they didn't want no smoke, they, they, they took the L that they wanted. They took the L that they was looking for, you know, to run around, waste the clock. Let me get out of here with my head still on my shoulders. He doesn't realize that those people who have come to my face and have questioned my skills got a real answer. They got a real answer. And he's going to have to have a real answer and a real solution for something that's not a problem. I'm not a problem. Problems have solutions. I'm a whole issue. He, uh, he says that he is plus 154 on the money line and is the smartest way to make money on Friday night. Your thoughts? My thoughts is he looking at the wrong thing. Thank you. All right. Last question for Bubba. Dylan, please. Hey there, Bubba. I appreciate you making some time. No problem. I'm just curious because you were talking about like studying Chris Wade's interviews, mannerisms. Is this like a linear thing in your career where you study those kind of, you know, aspects and, you know, add that to your analysis leading into fights? Or is this more of like a recent addition to your preparation? No, this is 100%. This is 100% um, me just no, looking at my opponent uh you know the the art of war teaches you to know yourself and also know your opponent and, and i know i know myself i know i know i i know i will bring it right to your front doorstep i know there's no part about me that is you know that will that will turn away from a charging rhino if i'm a lion i'm just i'm just not going to turn away i just don't i don't i don't have that in me to turn away um will i get tired yeah will i turn away hell no i've seen this man turn away his quit button is way too close to the top and maybe it'll be buried deeper down because we're both wrestlers and you know he's got this whole pride of him being you know the underdog and you know he's coming with that bravado but i've seen this man lose two fights already <laughs> like the fact that he's here he's lucky he's lucky he's lucky to be here not all oh, he worked here there's no freaking way he beat anthony dizzy i should be fighting dizzy right now the fact that I'm fighting Chris Way is the fact that he's lucky on the cards. And he's lucky I don't bust his, bust his ass when I see him. Like, he, he, he's talking a crazy game. And uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not appreciative of the way he carries my name in his mouth. I was going to say, just as a quick follow-up, is there a level of, I guess, trash talk and banter in this one that Ain't maybe no is talk. different Ain't from no other banter. fights? Or I'm not a, I'm not, there's no trash talk, no banter. I'm not a rival. This dude, this dude reverences me. Oh, to fight a, a man like Bubba Jenkins, to him being a national champion, he reverences me. There's a fear in his heart. There's a humbleness there for sure. There's something I see there in his humble want to be champion. But wait. Water always finds its weight. It always finds its balance. If you're good, water going to find good. If you're great, water going to find great. And it's always going to equal out. My man been to the same situation two times in a row and has not found great water. He won't find it either this time. He'll wash. Appreciate the insights and thanks for the time, man. No doubt. Bubba, thank you so much for coming out today. We really appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty, see you guys.